What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the top three stocks that I'm watching and looking to trade here in the rest of April of 2019. So I'm sure a bunch of you guys already know this by now, but we're in earnings season right now. And typically earnings season is one of the most exciting times in the stock market, right? A lot of the big name companies are reporting their earnings. We get to see the guidance, the growth quarter over quarter year over year, a lot of interesting things happen which fluctuate the stock market, right? Sometimes when a big name company reports earnings that are poor, and let's say another company reports earnings that are poor, you know, the stock market could be negatively affected, right? And the flip side is true as well. You know, companies report good earnings that gives, you know, optimism, you know, positive bullish sentiment in the stock market, <clears throat> and the stock market goes up, right? So that's the time period we're in right now. And I want to talk about three stocks that have have actually been doing very, very well recently that I'm personally watching here and looking to trade, you know, in this earnings season, right? And typically, I want to say this real quick, typically, I'm not trading stocks, you know, right before their earnings, right? I'm not looking to capitalize on an earnings play, but these stocks that I'm going to be talking about, I'm looking to get in and out either before earnings, see how they react before earnings, and maybe get in into them after their earnings. I'm not looking to, you know, hop in the day before and then hope their earnings do great and then profit on the upside, right? Because I've been doing that or not really been doing that. I've been there, right? I've done that and I've been burned a couple of times, right? I've gotten in right before trying to play an earnings play like the day before they report earnings, right? The stock does terrible in terms of their EPS, revenue, guidance, whatever, and I lose 10 15% the next day, which is why I typically wait till after earnings are reported or I trade the stock about a week or two before earnings are reported. So let's just talk about these three stocks very quickly. And I'm sure a lot of you all know and really, I've been familiar with these stocks because they've been the stock, uh, the talk of the stock market here over the past couple of days. So Disney stock is going to be the number one stock that I am watching, you know, really for the rest of this month for the same reason as why I'm watching the next stock we're going to be talking about. So Disney, we all know that they came out with details about their streaming service, which caused the stock to go absolutely parabolic, right? The stock went from about $117 all the way up to about $133. That was a 12% move in Disney stock, right? The analysts, they're not really the analysts, you know, the investors, the traders out there, they reacted very positively to this news. And this really popped the stock up like crazy and it opened up my eyes for a potential trade in Disney. But let me tell you guys what I want to see very quickly before I take a position in Disney. And to see that, let's hop over here to the three-year, one-week chart so we can really draw out a resistance. And I'm sure you guys can already see it here. It's right at around $120. You can say roughly from $115 to $120 over the past three years, this has been a spot where Disney has been struggling to break out of, right? $115. We got topped off there, 112, you know, 115 again here back in July of 2018. You know, 118 here, um, you know, back before the market corrected very heavily back in October. And now <clears throat> we were testing that same level before this news came out at about 118, and we aggressively popped up to 133. So, what I want to see here, guys, before I do build a position, and I've been talking about this in the previous couple of videos, but I figured I'd make a shorter video for those of you all that missed it, which is this video you're watching right now, is I I want to see the continuation of this pullback, maybe back down to 123, maybe 124, maybe 125 before building a position for a swing trade in Disney, right? And this, we see here that earnings are in the beginning of May, right? So let's say we do get a pullback 
maybe in the next couple of days, if that does end up happening, right, that could be a good opportunity maybe to swing it up to their earnings report. Or let's say we don't get the pullback or we just consolidate a bit. At this point, I might just wait and see, you know, their earnings. Maybe if the stock fluctuates to the downside after their earnings, I could even get in at a better price at that point, which is why at this point, guys, I'm just strictly watching Disney, but I do have a strong intention of trading it at the right level. So let's just take a look at some critical technicals that I'm seeing here. We're seeing the RSI, the relative strength index, is extremely overbought, right? It's at the 70 level, and for those of you guys that don't know what the RSI is, I have a more in-depth video on that. Just type in relative strength index, Stas Surface, my name into the YouTube search bar. That video will come up, and it'll explain a bit more what you know I use this for. But short, uh, just to put it in short terms here, it's very overbought, right? If the level is above 70, that means the stock ETF future index, whatever we're watching, is overbought really because the price has just been pushing up like crazy, right? So I want to see a little bit of a pullback again, the R side to be brought down a bit to get a better, uh, a better entry point on Disney. But be mindful, again, earnings season, they are reporting earnings here over the next couple of, you know, weeks. And let's say, you know, the stock does not pull back. It pops up to the 130s again, maybe starts to climb to the mid 135s. At that point, I'm just going to reevaluate the situation and make my decision from there. And I'm sure if that does end up happening, I'll make a future video on that in the next coming days, weeks, if that does end up happening. So let's talk about the second one, which is Qualcomm, guys. Very similar situation here. And it seems like Qualcomm's already breaking the all time highs here this morning. And guys, Qualcomm has gone up $20 per share in the matter of one day. Absolutely unbelievable here. And we saw yesterday Qualcomm and Apple, they've settled a dispute, a licensing dispute that's been going on, a legal battle that's been going on here, which sent up Qualcomm like crazy, right? They also signed a six-year um, you know, deal with Apple as well. So they're remaining or really becoming again, you know, a customer of Apple, which is a very, very good sign. And if you guys want to see more in depth on this. You know, I made a video yesterday about it briefly in the middle of that video. There's a bunch of other videos on YouTube that you should watch. And there's articles out there on the web, of course, where you can find more details on that. But all you need to know is the stock reacted ridiculously positively, right? If we can see from where it closed or rather where it was yesterday you know, up to where we are now, that was roughly, you know, a 30% move, you know, in Qualcomm stock. So I'm approaching this in a very similar way to Disney, right? So let's just hop over here and pull out some drawing tools very quickly so we can see some resistance and support levels that we could potentially be maybe pulling back to, you know, if, so, if people start to take profits on Qualcomm, if we start to see a pullback, which I think is likely to happen, right? Because the RSI is very extended here. Here. We've popped up 30%. There's likely to be people, you know, pushing the stock back down. Maybe people are shorting the stock. You know, maybe people are playing puts. I think, you know, this could definitely be coming back down. So keep an eye on these levels. So at this point, Seems like we already broke the 75, 76 level of the all-time high, which was a previous resistance, now a new support. So what I would be watching for today, really, and for the rest of this week slash month, is are we going to pull back to this level? If we do and we break that level, the next level we're going to be looking to see is... $73, right? Are we going to pull back down to $73? After that, at that point, let's see the next one. It's going to be at around $71 to $70-ish. Are we going to pull back and test that level? If we break that level and we get down to $69 maybe, which is the next one, and we break that level, the next one is going to be around $65, $66. So it's super important for you to draw out these resistance levels, you know, as Qualcomm pulls back, if it pulls 
back, right? Big if here. You know, these are the uh, spots where we could potentially enter this position as a swing trade, right? And just like Disney, this company is reporting earnings on the 1st of May, which is about two weeks away from when I'm recording this video. So be kind of mindful, right? If we don't get the pullback, you know, up to their earnings, you know, I'm personally going to be waiting till after they report earnings, probably going to be waiting till after they report earnings anyway, because it's super close at this point, and the stock's very overextended, and the odds that we do significantly pull back before earnings, I think, are kind of like slim, right? If I were to put a number on it, maybe like 30% or something, that's really just off the top of my head. But, you know, if we do, let's say, get a bad earnings report or something, let's say the, the stock goes down on earnings, maybe back down to the 65 level, maybe 60 66 level, maybe back down to the low 70s. You know, this could be an opportunity in my eyes after earnings to build a position depending on, you know, what the guidance is looking like you know, what the uh, EPS, you know, revenue, you know, net income, all those different things, what that's looking like for the company. But that's just the gist of it, guys. Qualcomm, very similar situation to Disney. I'm watching it super closely. Um, you know, this morning, honestly, this today, you know, the rest of this week, you know, the rest of this month, you know, I'm just going to be watching these two diligently. So the third one is advanced micro devices, guys. This one is finally looking to trend above the 20 $28 level, which is a level that I've been talking about and waiting for in terms of AMD to hold above. So we got a bit of a pullback the other day, it scared a bunch of people out of the stock. It was down to about $26.96 at its low. I held that position. If you guys recall, I talked about it in my video a couple of days ago because we were maintaining really the support at around $27, which was a support from the 9th of April in 2019, which was a very good sign in my eyes, right? And from there, we have two strong green days of um, upside push. And now we're really looking to hold $28, that old resistance, now a new support since we broke out of it as a new support, right? We can see the resistance at 28 here, the resistance again at 28 here from a couple of days ago. And the fact that we're breaking out of that level now seems like we're trending well into the, uh, you know, 28, 20 level, which is a good sign. And we're breaking that 50 simple moving average. This is a good sign that AMD wants to continue its uptrend. And why? I'm still holding the shares. And the whole idea here is to add more money into AMD as we truck into the mid $28, uh, maybe 2850, 2860, depending on how we move today and the rest of this week. And honestly, guys, I'm planning on if everything goes according to plan, which quite honestly, it doesn't always go according to plan in terms of the stock market. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know that by now, but I'm planning on getting out before this earnings report. Um, you know, which is next week on the 24th, I'm pretty sure is their earnings. But now it's saying 430. They might have pushed that back, actually, which is actually better for me, honestly. So they, it looks like they did end up pushing back their earnings because last time I checked, it was on the 24th. Fourth, I guess they did push it back a couple of days, which again is good for me. Gives me some more time to be in the stock, um, you know, to get out before earnings. But that's the whole idea here, guys. My goal to sell is roughly twenty nine fifty. I think my limit order is, you know, if we get to the thirty level, you know, I might push that up if we're looking to get to that thirty level. But as of now, you know, AMD is looking pretty solid, right? We're continuing the push, breaking into the twenty eight dollar level, which again is super attractive in my eyes, which is why I am watching it and actively in it guys this is the only one out of the three that i'm actively in again qualcomm and disney i'm looking to get into those on positive catalysts on pullbacks i'm just waiting to see right so i hope you guys enjoyed this video drop a comment down below let me know what you think about these three stocks i would love to know if you enjoyed the video hit that like button it really supports me and supports the channel in general and subscribe to the channel if you're new right if you enjoy the content i make trading update videos you know stock market update videos tips you know how to use platforms you know stocks i'm watching all that stuff you know personal finance you know stocks i'm buying long-term investing if you're interested interested in that this is the channel for you i'll catch you all in the next video i hope you guys do well today and whatever you're doing thank you all for watching again peace out